This is such a big thing, right? Oh, come on, Jim. Jim. Good morning, Colin. Morning. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Um, fantastic. Thank you for being on the show today. Thank you for I wanted to be, be kind of businesslike. <laughs> um, Can I see the other girl? <laughs> Hello and welcome to Qatar's first sports podcast, In The Game. I'm your host, Steve Mackey, and we can't wait to introduce you to everything that is sports here in Qatar and afar. We're going to be bringing you personalities, company owners, institutions, individuals that are making a real difference. So, with us, enjoy the journey. It's, it's fun, man. Sports is fun. Everyone, thank you for listening. Please send us your feedback on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. And don't forget to review us on your favourite podcast app. Hello and welcome to In The Game, Qatar's first sports podcast today. We have, as always, a very, very special guest. I love the colour you are wearing today. Please introduce yourself and tell us who you are. Thank you so much uh, for the compliment. Uh, my name is uh, Mikhailchenko Natalia. I'm Russian. I'm uh, like uh, very active uh, in terms of sports, in terms of uh, sports hospitality and business. I'm in love uh, with the country I'm in now. I love Qatar. And I love uh, that uh, people are doing quite a lot of sports here. Why we've got Natalia on today is because it's, in the game is all about people making a difference. And, and Natalia is definitely here in Qatar and she's making a difference. She's been here for a year and, and I don't know where she gets all the time to be doing all these activities and, and working as well in the <laughs> industry. It's incredible. Um, we're going to start your story off if we can. Um, when did it, when did sports? When, how did you get involved in sports? All those many, not many years ago. You're very young, but how many years ago did you you kind of what what sports did you get involved with? I think uh, the sports and uh, I we are like following uh, each other the whole life. Uh, as far as I remember myself, I was always doing uh, any kinds of sports possible. So I started with gymnastics. I was doing gymnastics for around maybe five six years. It was a uh, quite harsh period of my life because uh, you cannot eat uh, more food than uh, possible. You have to train uh, twice a day. So it, uh, it was pretty hard time. After it, uh, I started doing uh, karate because my father, he said, like, uh, you're a very active child. We need to put you in a, some kind of sports uh, for you to be more disciplined yeah. and uh, to be more active. And to see that uh, like uh, life is not only about studies, yeah. it's also about sports. So I went to karate, I met karate I think for three years. After it I was doing basketball and um, in 2004 during uh, after Olympic Games in um, Beijing, as far as I remember I saw Russian national team playing volleyball. And like, oh my God, I love this kind of sports. I think it's so exciting. So I told my, my dad, like uh, now I want to do this kind of sports. Yeah. And uh, after two months, I joined uh, like a volleyball school and uh, here we go. So I started doing uh, volleyball and I enjoyed it so much. It was it's a team kind of sport. So it's nice that uh, people are there for each other. They're helping each other. It's a special community of people like yeah. uh, volleyball players. I think they'd be different. Ah, I played. I, I did play volleyball, um, and I, I used to love it. It was it was very good. But can I? I I'm going to take you back to the, the your younger years, and where you kind of um, that that your your family got you involved in in gymnastics. How difficult you said it was a, a bit difficult with the, the the diets and everything. But what did it teach you back then? What was the, with the discipline, what, what was it like? What, how did it, it kind of lead on to give you the best foundation for the, for the rest of your life? Yeah, I think that uh, gymnastics uh, is the kind of sports when uh, you are there on your own. So you're not a team player, you're an individual. So yeah. you, are, you should be very competitive because uh, the amount of uh, ladies who are coming in the sports in Russia, it's, uh, there are pretty a lot of ladies yeah. who, are, who are doing this kind of sports. And I think uh, to achieve something, you need to work uh, nonstop. You need to show your coach that you were something. You need to show that um, you're dedicated to this, that uh, even if you are, for example, you ate uh, more, yeah. and next, uh, next uh, training, uh, they put you on the weight. If uh, you are like have, uh, I don't know, 400, 500 more, you are on the jumping rope the whole uh, the whole training. Wow. So it teaches you not uh, not to eat too much. 
and uh, to know like uh, the norms and so on. And your family got you involved in this. It, yeah. Was it was, what was it just to learn the discipline side of things? I think so. I think I was super active, and it's better to put my energy in uh, some good direction than uh, to let me, I don't know, to have fun with my friends and so on. So I think my dad took a right decision to put me in touch and uh, with sports wor world and uh, to let me see how I can achieve something by myself at yeah. the early age. So you're you're in Russia. You're going through all these. You you find you've done basketball. You but volleyball was something that you got involved in and you got to a high level. Yeah, I think that volleyball. Uh, what I liked from the beginning about volleyball, the community. I like that it's a team uh, kind of sports because, um, as I told, people are there for each other. They're helping each other, and uh, you cannot win uh, on your own. You always need a team. Yeah. And it's good that um, if uh, today it's not my day, I'm not playing very well, there are other people who can help so we can accomplish each other on the court. Yeah. And I think the same principle is uh, also in life. You always need uh, a team, you should be a team player. Yeah, it's, it's so important because it, it, with, and, and you know where they got the team, it's together everybody achieves more. Yeah. And it's exactly, exactly that, right? If you're all working together, and I, I think that's the, where the success of the most successful coaches is, is where they bring out the, the where they can they can just make that that team come together. Exactly. Because the, look at Leicester. I, I remember with the Premiership back in in the UK, and Leicester was in the Premiership, but they won it, and nobody expected that because he just got them to play play yes. as a team. It was fantastic. No, no. When the team is going uh, together, even like I can give you an example of. Uh, like our Russian volleyball team, uh, like men team, they were playing in 2012 uh, Olympic Games in London. They were playing the final against Brazil and they were losing. They didn't have any chance and they uh, were losing 2-0 and they won 3-2. It was incredible. It, like, like the history of Russia, it, like everyone loved this moment and everyone thinking about this. And the same what Russian national team made in uh, are the game against uh, Spain during a World Cup in Russia. Because in the beginning they were like, oh, we don't believe in Russian national team, Russian football is not uh, such a high level as the England or Brazil or other teams. And they made miracle. They won against Spain in the quarterfinal. I'm glad that you've just brought the subject up about the World Cup. What was it like having the World Cup in, in Russia? I'm, uh, I'm super proud of what Russia did. So. Uh, as I told you, like some countries didn't believe in Russia at all and some people were cautious about going to Russia because uh, they had some stereotypes about it. But I think uh, Russia did a great job in terms of proving the world that uh, we are a country with hospitality. We are a country also about sports and uh, that we can deliver amazing events. Yeah, I, I, I remember going back in and everybody just had great things to talk about and, yes. and, and how well you pulled the the um the world cup off it was it was fantastic yeah. uh, the, and and i'm going to touch one more subject on your, your family how big an influence were they with with all your sports and activities that you got involved with they uh they always supported me they never said no to anything they were like uh, if you want to do this do this but uh make sure you're you're good at it and uh, you love what you, you're doing if you don't love what you're doing it's not your thing so better choose something in life you're passionate about you love about so even when I was working in uh, like volleyball club as a press officer, they were coming to the games, uh, they were like watching the games, they were watching me working, so for them they were proud of me. With what they've done with you and you, the, the, remember, when, when you have children, is there anything you're going to do differently? No, I think I will uh, like uh, follow the same pattern. Yeah, fantastic. And, and you, you, um, you gave you, you had tickets for the World Cup? Yes, I was... Uh, I had the chance to get some tickets for the final and uh, the first person I thought about was my dad. So I would love to give him an opportunity of his lifetime to go to see the uh, final of uh, FIFA World Cup in Moscow in Luzhniki Stadium. I think it was incredible. My dad really, really loved it. And you had two tickets, so you went with him. So that must, yeah. must have been special. You were sitting in uh, different places. <laughs> he, was, uh, he was sitting with uh, like uh, fans from uh, France. But uh, he liked it a lot. That, and that just, that, that, that just sums up the World Cup anyway, because um, you had people from all over the wor yeah. world. And it doesn't matter then if you're, you're in with, with other supporters. It's, exactly. it's the love of the game, right? No, no people were uh, enjoying the atmosphere. And for me, I think uh, 
this moment when you are at the stadium of the final of the World Cup and it's in your like home country and you're proud how it was organized. So, you know, I was I had goosebumps uh, during all these two hours at the stadium. It was uh, really incredible, something to remember forever. So how did from from Russia, how did you come to Qatar? Because you've only been here for a year, right? I, w I was here for a year non-stop. Yesterday was uh, like 15th of February. I arrived to Qatar and got stuck here because of pandemic. But I was coming here before for uh, some uh, uh, meetings, like a job things, because uh, during the World Cup in Russia, uh, we were taking care of the delegation of Qatar, of the royal family, of uh, like everyone coming uh, actually from Qatar to Russia. So we were providing uh, different... Uh, things for them from transportation, logistics, hotels and everything. So that's how I first met uh, Qatar in my life. And uh, after it, uh, we were coming here to also to negotiate, to meet some people. And uh, I, I like fall in love with this country. First time I came here 2018, uh, almost right after the World Cup. And uh, since then, my country, like uh, in my heart, both countries like Russia and Qatar became like one. Yeah. And it is Qatar has a, a has the ability to do that for you. I I, I kind of it is a such a welcoming place. And the, what do you think to the World Cup? What it's going to be like here? I think I think it will be incredible because uh, I know people who are working for like Supreme Committee who are working on making this World Cup unbelievable. They are working nonstop, and people are paying a lot of attention to details. And I think this World Cup should be something, something special. Because when people came uh, to Russia for like inspection visits during the World Cup, they knew that they wanted to make the best World Cup in Qatar. But when they saw that the level uh, of uh, the World Cup uh, Russia made, it's so, so high. So now they need to make it even, even better. Yeah. And uh, I think they will do it. I think it will be fantastic. I, I think so too. I think you, you've got, it's got a, um, it's going to be an amazing event here. You've only been, again, I'm going to say that again, because you've only <laughs> been here a year. It's like, but you've just managed to fit into the, the ecosystem here, the, the kind of sports, the business. How did you, and a, a pandemic in the meantime we, we had, how did you manage all of those things? And, and I know that the achievements that you made, and they're quite incredible. Um, but the sporting has been at the core of everything, right? Yeah, exactly. I think uh, that uh, people who are doing a sp like different kind of sports, uh, they are similar to each other. They have the same mindset of uh, achieving something, of uh, being dedicated to something. And I think well, that's what um, puts me more in touch with uh, pe local people and people who are coming here because everyone is so active. People are waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, running 10K, cycling 100K, going to the gym. It's, uh, it's amazing because people are active from, you know, from the moment they're waking up in the morning till the evening. Yeah. In the evening, they're playing paddle, they're playing tennis, whatever. So it's uh, it's pretty perfect. You are doing, I think, I, I saw you, you win, you won a, um, or you've done really well in a, a volleyball competition, beach volleyball? Yeah, it was a beach volleyball competition in Aspire Zone. I remember you saying, oh, I might take part, I might not take part. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I see a picture and you've, you've won the competition. Yeah. <laughs> now, anything you put your hand to, like you're saying, oh, yeah, I've, I've, I, I know this paddle now. <laughs> What the, you're, you're doing some remarkable things, and and when I say make a difference, it's it's like you are you've got a group that you belong to where where there's a hundred people. How many yeah. people are involved in this group, ladies? Uh, around one hundred ladies, and uh, we are trying to motivate them to uh, do different kind of sports. Uh, it, this group was started not so long ago. It was it's more about running and cycling. Now my job is to bring different uh, kind of sports there, like. Uh, to make uh, girls uh, play paddle or maybe to go to Zumba classes to provide for them something interesting they would be happy to be part of. You're going to have to get one of our, there's, um, I call her Zara, Zim Zara Zumba. Hello, Zara Zumba. <laughs> She's fantastic. She's built like a sports empire just because she used to do these these Zumba classes. So I'll, I'll introduce you to her. She's really fantastic. Nice. Yeah, yeah. But paddle, paddle is such a, a big hit here in Qatar. Yeah, it's And there's going to be a lot of people that don't know, from Spain, There's going they're, they're going to know, but. <laughs> <laughs> but from uh, from around the world, I, I didn't hear of paddle before. I never heard about paddle before coming to Qatar. First, I saw um, uh, it in a Sheraton court. It's like, oh my God, what people are doing there yeah. nonstop. You know, you're going there at uh, 2 a.m. and everyone is playing paddle. What What is this? I, I tried uh, it one like um, more than one year ago, first time. 
and it was uh, it was nice, but it was not uh, too much involving. But uh, last September, with a group of friends, we we're like, okay, let's try uh, let's try this paddle, and uh, it became uh, something special because I think this sport is about socializing. It's about the community. It's not about you know to achieve something or to make uh, yourself stronger, like jump higher yeah. or jump, uh, run faster. It's not about this. It's about uh, how you communicate with your partner, how you feel each other, and uh, also about having some uh, fun on the courts. Yeah. Because and it's for, for people playing. So. It's, it's very, it's because it's, I, I thought at first it, it was going to be easy because the ball's going to hit and it's going to bounce everywhere and you can get to it. But <laughs> but it's quite difficult. Right? It's, it's, quite, it's, it's quite difficult, yes. And you need to, you get need to, to be it. quite fit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I've seen these, these um, I know that, um, I, I know, um, Xavi, um, there's a, a Spanish guy, he's a strength and conditioning coach. He was another one of our guests and he was on um, on there talking about paddle because he's with um, he's with some uh, a Thai partner. I think it's from the Al Kawari family. Okay. And and literally he said, I'll come and have a go. And I thought, oh, well, this can't be too, this can't be too <laughs> difficult. But it was it was quite, you needed yeah, to be uh, quite, uh, quite fit. Quite tense. <laughs> yeah. Of course, we like last December um, uh, with my friends, we said like, uh, let's organize something for ladies because there are so many paddle competition for men so let's do let's do something special for ladies so we organized the tournament in uh, Marcy Malas Kempinski okay it's uh, we are very grateful for them for helping us with it and uh, we made competition for 72 ladies so it was uh, incredible that it was, was incredible. three days yeah, yeah. Uh, three days of paddle with the different sponsors from uh, Uridu and uh, wow, Blue Salon success, yeah. uh, Sports Corner they helped us a lot with it yeah. and uh, the event was covered by Bean Sports Alcas so everyone paid attention to it Peninsula wow. everyone they liked it a lot because it's something for for ladies here because yeah. not so many events are for ladies so more attention is paid to guys, but now the the wave of uh, ladies doing sports and uh, participating in competition it's starting. You're wanting to get people participating, especially ladies, and I know what you're doing. What's your ambition? What's that ambition? Is it just to keep on fulfilling, or just keep on getting people more, um, uh, getting more people involved in sports? I think uh, yes, uh, it's about uh, getting more uh, ladies and uh, like people in general be involved in sports. Because um, it's nice to have uh, some ambitions, you know, you wake up in the morning, not only for job, yeah. but uh, sports is, um, as I told before, that it's community yeah. and everyone wants to be a part of, uh, of this community. So everyone is motivating each other, like to run faster, to run longer, to run uh, longer distances. Yeah. And I think uh, I think it's very nice when you want to achieve something, not to be stuck, you know, because it's uh, the principle how also, like, for example, Iron Man started when uh, people who are sitting in the offices and working non-stop, they just wanted, they were lacking the sense of achievements. Yeah. They were missing something in their life. And when they started uh, making this triathlon, running, cycling, they found uh, something uh, in their day to live for. Yeah, of course. And, and, and sometimes that's all it takes. And, and we, we were saying with this, with this group, you've got it to 100 right now. And we were talking before about the language and, and saying, and, and I'm really, it's one of my biggest regrets with, with not learning the language. And you said you're learning it slowly. Um, but I want to get to people out there that, that, that say, well, how can I, mostly it's Qatari ladies, but you're opening up to other um, nationalities. Um, is, is the communication barrier a problem? A little bit a problem when uh, the communication in the group is in Arabic. So yeah. <laughs> that's, well, that's going to be a problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a bit complicated, but in general, everyone is speaking English. And uh, if you want to talk to people uh, to discuss something and to ask for ideas, of course, everyone will share their opinion in English. I'm sure you can. Uh, how would they get in contact with you to, if they wanted to be part of this? If there, it was a, a, a problem, the language, how could they get in touch with you that you could introduce? We have uh, like two ladies who, st who started uh, the this group, this community, they are Arabic speaking, so yeah. it's uh, it will be and it is uh, their part. So yeah. they're inviting more people there. So for me, it will be introducing uh, different uh, activities, different yeah. new activities. Yeah. So it will be more in English. And yeah, it'll perfect, be perfect. It's also about teamwork. We'll we'll, we'll share the, your contact details and so that people can get get in touch. Now, with with you going forward in in Qatar, what what do you want to achieve in this time span? I think uh, I would love to make some achievements like work-wise or to 
bring I think the level of hospitality and events on another level because I have some experience working in uh, Olympic Games in Sochi in Russia. It was an incredible experience. I was working in Club for, in uh, World Cup in Russia. I was working in Club World Cup here in Qatar uh, last year uh, with the Flamengo team. So I have a uh, pretty, pretty good experience and I was working as organizing director of the Champions League in volleyball in Russia. So it's good to have, you know, this mixture of experiences from abroad so that uh, to be able to play on another level here. Yeah. And I think also here, like, there are lots of um, like-minded people who want to achieve uh, the best of the World Cup and after we'll have uh, Asian Games 2030. Yeah. So a lot of events are, are coming here. So you don't see your, yourself leaving for <laughs> no, I love this country. I love Qatar. I think uh, it's uh, it's nice to be able to travel, but uh, I think uh, for uh, this time, I'm so happy I'm in Qatar. Okay, you play a lot of sports. What are those other things that you keep yourself fit with? How do you? What are those other? I, I know that we said about stretching um, beforehand, so that you we were talking about the sports before the podcast. Um, how important is that? Because I know that it's pretty much fundamental to what you do. I think uh, stretching is also the activity I'm uh, doing pretty uh, during all my life, starting from the gymnastics. And I really feel the difference when uh, I'm working out. I really need to finish my workout by stretching because uh, after it, I don't have any pain in muscles. I don't have anything and I feel more like relieved and more more flexible and it's giving more energy up. Even if I don't have, like, uh, for example, energy to make a high intensity workout, a functional workout today, I will just go, I will stretch, and I will feel amazing after it. Yeah, yeah. I think stretching is super important because uh, even here in Qatar, people are running so much, uh, they are cycling so much, but they need to pay uh, some attention also to some activities which will be able to put their muscles uh, in the right direction yeah. and uh, to leave them flexible. Do you think, because I, I now, uh, we've got a better um, understanding about what you do and, and your business lifestyle is very much included in your sport. Do you think um, that helps you in your business side of things um, so that you being physically fit and yeah. all these things? Does that, that fire you forward more? Does that keep you... Yeah, uh, exactly. It's uh, I think it's keeping you more motivated. It's giving you much more energy. Even people are saying like, if you are down today, just go and jump, uh, and after you will have uh, the burst of energy inside your your body. It's just something incredible. Just go like dance or jump or run. Yeah. And uh, if you are depressed, this depression will uh, will be waved away. Here's one for you, okay? I, I'm dealing with a company from a startup perspective. Well, they're a bit more than a startup perspective, but top stretching. They're Russian. They come from Russia. I, yes. I, I, do you know about this company? Yes, I have a great history with this company because um, at uh, the Masters uh, in my university, we had an award. And uh, this award was in uh, like different fields like arts, uh, um, I don't remember, like modeling, and it was sports. Yeah. And there were like uh, my friends messaged me, oh, Natalia, there is an award, you should uh, be part of it. It's like, okay, I never participated in any, any competitions like this, you know. It's like, okay, I will, uh, I sent my, uh, not CV, but uh, fill, filled in the form, like, okay, I will be part of this award. And there were like three ladies in the finals. And uh, their, one of the biggest prizes for it was uh, one year um, a subscription for Top Stretching. They, ju they were just starting in Russia. Right. And I won this award and uh, I got this one, uh, one year for free attendance to their studios. And it was incredible because uh, I was missing gymnastics. Okay, I was doing stretching all the time, but I was not doing, you know, the stretching for one hour. Yeah. And I started uh, going into the classes and uh, I loved it so much. I, I was going there like two, three trainings per day or like 10 trainings per week. So it was, uh, it was really nice. I really enjoyed it. And they're one of the, uh, it's kind of, it's only just uh, um, because they, they, they shouted out to me about kind of looking at them opening up in Qatar. Um, but it's, they seem to be really, they're, they're flying with their, their, their brand and their, their kind of, um, their, their formula. Yeah. It it seems to be working now in Dubai even. 
Yeah, in Dubai uh, they uh, they are pretty cute. I know both owners. Uh, I know Anna, who is a uh, face of uh, top stretching. She was a girl who gave me this award. Right. So yeah, she's an incredible person, and uh, she's motivating you to take care of yourself, to do a lot of sports. Uh, it's really, really something, uh, something fantastic, and uh, I'm really happy for the achievements because when uh, they started, and I almost joined uh, their classes, so uh, they were they had like two or three studios in Moscow. I think now they have around twenty, and uh, in Russia, Belarus, they wow. have in Dubai now. So they are growing very fast. I'm really happy for. And they want guys. to come to Qatar. Yeah, they want. Uh, we, we discussed uh, with them coming to Qatar, and I think it's an uh, amazing field here to be able to promote uh, to promote themselves and to involve uh, ladies in the sport. They've got something special. They have got something special. That's for sure. Um, let's see if we can kind of maybe they come on the show with us. That's amazing. Yeah, good <laughs> on you. And and with with um, it's like in this next, I suppose, six months. What's the plans? Your short term plans? What what have you got coming up that we should be looking at? Have you got any more beach ball? Um, what is it? Beach volleyball games? Our I think uh, there these days uh, one of the events uh, is coming here next week uh, we start uh, the competition uh, for beach volleyball tournaments but it's under international federation okay it will take place in Algarafa in the beginning of March it will be also competition for also international four star uh, tournament in uh, Qatar it will be uh, both genders it will be for male and female okay so it will be around 200 uh, 216 participants so it will be really really huge and it's starting in a, another couple of weeks yeah it's starting now yeah. next week and in in, uh, in two weeks so in a few weeks time can you come on and talk about it after maybe after after it finished yes yeah come on in and <laughs> but uh, we finished. want uh, we want also to make uh, like with my friends we are playing volleyball twice a week and we are thinking about uh, making some uh, competitions, uh, competitions tournament uh, for ladies to motivate them more to play beach volleyball. Yeah, I think that's going to be a, a, a great, great, great step in the right direction because it's it's taken off really well here. Yeah, because it was the first uh, event for beach volleyball for ladies in uh, December in uh, Aspire. And we participated in it and we were preparing for, I think, one month and a half to take part in it. So we won. But it was it was incredible, and it was a pleasure that uh, more and more events uh, for women, because I think there was also basketball and uh, like basketball, volleyball, and uh, some other kinds of sport, and it's uh, a lot of women uh, participated. Okay, so for let's 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 come to a culmination of the show. I told you it was going to go go really quickly. <laughs> okay, it is. what what would be your advice for women to get involved in sports and to start off slow? Obviously, start off in slowly. But what advice could you give them for somebody that's that's just starting out in the fitness world? I think it's important, uh, for sure, it's important to start slowly, not to say like, oh, I will go every every day somewhere. I will do this kind of sports because. Uh, Sometimes uh, you like become very bored uh, with the same. If you are starting slowly, you are building up uh, little by little, and you will achieve uh, achieve much more. And uh, second one is uh, not to give up if you don't see some achievements, some results. They're not coming very fast in sports. It's uh, the it takes uh, a lot of time uh, to build on uh, your body, your muscles. The muscles need to adapt. Of course, you will have uh, pain in your muscles in the, be in the beginning, but uh, after uh, after it, you will feel so relieved. You will feel that your body is changing, and I think it's uh, the biggest uh, the biggest motivation you can have. No, that's really good advice. That is good advice. Thank you so much for coming thank on. Thank you so much today. for having me. Yeah, yeah, and thank you so. On literally, I, I kind of, I, I, I love your story. I think that what you've done here in just a year is incredible, and I, I want to get that, that over because, um, y it takes so much time to to um, come over and get started and find the culture side of things. But you've come over and you've got, you're you're firing forward on, on multiple fronts. <laughs> it's fantastic, and it's all from a sporting perspective. Um, and, and it's a great story with your family and how important that, that family was and, and how it culminates in, in different achievements. So yeah, thank you exactly. so much for coming on. Everybody, I hope you enjoyed the show today. It was a privilege to have Natalia on the show today. Um, it's, it's there for you. It's there for you to push your kids. Um, I, I, I say push your kids. 
it's like give them something, give them something that they can achieve towards because it's going to have such an effect on them in the long terms. I've had children, they've all been involved in sports and it teaches them, it gives them discipline, it helps them along the way, it plays, you're playing teams and those are the best ways to, to go forward in the later lives because you've got something that will stay with you forever. Anyway, that's enough of me. Thank you so much for listening this time. See you next week. Bye for now. Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Everyone, thank you for listening. Please send us your feedback on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. And don't forget to review us on your favorite podcast app.